scope report design requirements. Today we are going to start a very interesting series where we are going to learn how to design effective reports in Power BI. And this is the very first module where we are going to learn about scope report design requirements. In this video, we are going to first do the introduction, then we are going to identify the audience. Later on, we are also going to work on determine report types, then define user interface requirement, followed by define user experience requirements. And lastly, we are going to check knowledge, whatever we have learned in this session. So there would be certain questions over there. You need to help me to answer those questions. So please stay tuned till the end of this video. Gathering appropriate inputs to scope your report design requirements involve identifying your audience, determining the suitable report types, and define their interface and experience requirements. It's very important that you know your audience and it is also very important to know what is the exact requirement, what kind of report you need to design for that particular requirement. So in this module, we are going to consider a Contoso skateboard store company which specializes in direct to consumer skateboard sales to modernize their workflow and gain deeper understanding of their product sales and inventory management. The company needs to create a set of reports to deliver the data to their employees. Currently, the finance and supply chain divisions operate in vertical silos. These divisions use differently, which has resulted in many inconsistencies and in how they interpret the data when making decisions. These inconsistencies have often led to disagreements and misalignments at the executive level because the number don't match. Also, the company currently consumes this information by using formats that aren't optimized for a modern workforce. Also, employees commonly send many hours creating improvised reports by using disparate data sources. These reports answer simple questions like, what were our sales in the Los Angeles area last month? These improvised reports have contributed to the duplication of efforts, resulting in overlapping of reports that might occasionally use different calculation logic over the same data. The company has committed to develop a new suite of reports to meet the new requirements. For example, promote a standard view of their data and business logic that is a single source of truth across all divisions. Ensure reports deliver up to the data that is no older than 24 hours for sales and 1 hour for inventory. Create modern sales and inventory reports. Design reports that feel natural and are user friendly. Publish reports that have sufficient depth of detail and allow report consumer to discover new insights. And finally, apply consistent corporate brand standards. So these are kind of the requirement for that company where we are going to design, we are going to understand what kind of reports do we need, how to do that, what is going to be your user experience and much more. The very first, you need to identify the audience. That means identifying the audience is one of the most important steps in the report design process. It enables the report author to create a final result that can be efficiently used and will meet the needs of the report consumer. There are basically three broad categories of audiences. That means your executive, analyst and information worker. If we talk about the executive, an executive is a person who is charged with making plans and decisions that often involve a medium or long term focus. Executives are responsible for making the business run smoothly. Now let's talk about the analyst. Who is an analyst? An analyst is a person who provides guidance to the organization. Analysts can be responsible for a range of tasks, often with goals of determining the effectiveness of business strategies, developing or improving processes, or implementing a change. And finally, let's talk about an information worker. An information worker is someone who uses data to make help decisions or take decisions. Often these decisions and actions are operational in that they are done on a daily basis. Next, we are going to determine report types. 
Generally, reports are divided into the different types. That means it can be your dashboard, it can be your analytical report, operational reports and educational reports. So what are these? I'm sure you know about the dashboard. The primary goal of a dashboard is to interpret the story as quickly as possible so that you can have overall view what is going on. Users' interactions are limited by insights that are highly curated towards the audience. Report visuals are focused, self-explanatory and are clearly labeled. A dashboard directly communicates the meaning behind the data to minimize misinterpretation or confusion. If we talk about the dashboard examples, there can be any number of dashboards, but generally it's going to tell you a story. For example, your executive dashboard, which often presents high level metrics that are displayed on a single stage. I'm sure in your company or your organization also, your management is asking to create a dashboard where they can view the different department's performance, how the data is going on, what is going up, what is going down, where is the profit, where is the loss and so on. Now, if we talk about the analytical reports, an analytical report is the most common type of report that can serve various report consumer use cases while providing a structured space for analysis. Here, you should also note that the primary goal of an analytical report is to help report consumers discover answers to a broad array of questions by interacting with the report and its visuals. Analytical reports often have many slices to filter your report data and they often contain complex visuals that expose in-depth detail of the data. For example, your tree chart, that can be your AI-based visualizations, etc. Now finally, let's talk about the last two one that is operational and education one. Operational reports are designed to give the report consumer the ability to monitor current or real-time data, make decisions and act on those decisions. For example, if you are working in a for example, if you are working in a bank or in a call center, there you would find these kinds of report where the data is coming in real time and people can make their decisions based on that. This type of report should minimize the number of analytical features to ensure that focus remains on the operation that it's designed to serve. A streamlined user experience is the primary aim for this report because Excessive clicking or illogical flow can lead to a high dissatisfaction. Now, finally, we will talk about the educational report. Educational report assumes that the report consumer is unfamiliar with the data or context. That means you are trying to educate the people who are going to interact with this report. So the report must provide clear narrative detail and guidance to help with understanding. This type of report is often used in journalism and by government to disseminate information to large audiences that have varying level of understanding of the subject. A very good example of educational report can be your COVID-19 dashboard for your own country where people can go, can see the information and also they can read some kind of small, small stories over there. Now, we are going to talk about the defined user interface requirements. You should know that user interface requirements relate to how reports are consumed and to the appearance and behavior of the reports. Aspects to consider include form factor, input method, style and theme and accessibility. So as you can see on your screen, there are basically four steps to define user interface requirement. First, you have to consider the form factor. That means in the context of your report design, Form factor describes the size of the hardware that is used to open report and to page orientation. Whether you are going to consume on mobile phone or laptop or on your TV screen or you are going to use a VR gear or anything else. So that is the form factor. Secondly, it comes to the input method. That means when defining your user interface requirement, you have to consider input methods that are supported by the device or application. While a computer has a keyboard and a pointing device, Mobile devices rely on common gestures. For example, you just tap with your fingers or double tap or pinch or zoom or something like that. Report consumers who are also using mobile devices can also use on screen keyboard, voice control or barcode and QR code readers. Now comes to the style and theme. This is the third step and you should know that UI requirements should also consider this aspect. 
strive to design reports with a consistent and distinctive appearance that is determined by a deliberated theme. The report theme should express your organizational branding or aim to complement it. At a minimum, the theme should include two things, that means your brand mark or logo, and then a palette of colors that align to your organizational theme. Additionally, you can also work on the text strings, including font selection, sizes, and colors. Lastly, we are going to talk about the step four, which is accessibility. UI requirements should also factor in accessibility. Reports need to communicate to the broadest audience possible. So you should consider how report consumers with no to low vision or other physical disability can fully experience the reports. To support people with low or no vision, consider using clear and large sized fonts, well spaced and large visuals, sufficiently contrasting colors, and intuitive report navigation that can be understood by keyboard and screen readers. Now let's define user experience requirements. We just talked about the user interface requirements. Now we are going to talk about user experience requirements. UX or user experience requirements relate to how reports drive to expected report consumer needs. To access user experience requirements, you should consider the audience, report type and UI requirements. And there are many factors that we should consider over here. And you can see on your screen such as spot for instructions, spot for ad hoc questions to retrieve a response in the form of a data visualization, configuring of data alerts to notify people, then there are many others such as link to open pages, page layout, printing to report to a physical printer or PDF form, subscribing to the report so that it can be automatically delivered as a document on a scheduled basis, adding commentary, feedback or engaging to conversation about the report. So till now we have gone through all the different kinds of reports, audience requirements, then we also see the UI interface requirements and then we also explore the user experience requirements. Finally, we are going to check the knowledge. That means there are certain questions over here. And for these questions, please have a look and help me to answer in the comment section. In the next video, I am going to present you their answers. Thank you so much for watching this very first module. See you in the next video.